Hello and uh, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining our demo. Uh, my name is Götz Lessmann. I'm in DataVart in charge of our consulting services. As VIP for this demo, we have... Hello everyone, I'm Michal Alexa, and I'm a service line manager for Data Innovation Lab here in DataVart. And just for this demo, he dressed up in his Cloudera cold-blooded t-shirt. Appreciate that very much. We are partnering very closely with Cloudera. Um, we are skipping all this who are we things for today. I mean, since you found this demo, I assume that you know who we are and that we are DataVart. We focus on data management for SAP. We focus on big data topics. And our mission, so to speak, is that we don't do me-too topics. So what we are showing you today is how easy it is to integrate a data lake, a big data architecture, based on Hadoop, Hive, and Cloudera Impala with SAP systems. As this demo, we will show you how to create a database table on Hadoop, but running that from an SAP landscape, how to select data uh, from SAP and replicate that data into Hadoop. And to show you and prove that we don't just make these things up, we are actually going to log on to Hue. That's the Cloudera management tool. It's a web-based frontend. And we will show you the table over there and we will show you that indeed we took data from SAP and put it into Hadoop, all in this 15-minute demo. Um, the landscape we are using, what kind of Hadoop is that? Well, we are actually using our Hadoop installation. It's 5.5 installation. So it's a, just a standard, but it's a physical system installation. So it's pretty powerful cluster. And we are running Cloudera. Yes, Cloudera, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, um, this is the high-level infrastructure and architecture of what we are going to show you. So what this demo is about is primarily about the things you see here on the upper right-hand corner. So that's the Glue workbench where we are going to work with. So um, let's just switch to um, let's just switch to SAPGUI and get going. Here we are. So this is a NetWeaver system, I think it's a 720 NetWeaver system. Uh, we do have no restrictions with uh, versions between Hadoop and SAP. So um, in case you're wondering and you're thinking of Hana Bora, so this is a bit more flexible and it doesn't um, limit too much with, with uh, versions and software versions. So what we have here is, this is the Glue cockpit. You have different options to do things to do here. We have a data dictionary which we utilize for, for Hadoop. I don't I think that's a thing and the concept we took over from SAP to the Hadoop side. Um, and what we are going to do is we are going to work with this object navigator. So if you're familiar with the ABAP workbench, you will um, recognize that this is very, very similar to the um, ABAP workbench. So if you are familiar with creating development objects in the ABAP workbench, then um, this will pretty much like ring a bell. So if we go into here, you can see that there is a tree on the left-hand side and in this tree, we can flexibly create new objects. So what we are doing here first is we're going to create a Hive table. So um, how do we call that table? Z Cloudera? That would be good. Um, we are actually not using... <laughs> <laughs> it should be working. It should be working, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's a table, um, how about we replicate vendors? So we do, um, oh, customers, two customers. Customer, master, data. That's why I'm not using the keyword, because I have thick fingers from <laughs> ERP. Here we go. So in here, when we create this table, we can enable updates. I think that's a pretty much cool feature for Hadoop. Why is that so, Michael? Why is it so? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that common, actually, to do updates in the Hive tables. So, like, in general, of the usability of the HDFS is not allowing that. So, to allow updates via our software, it's, it's pretty great. See? That was correct. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, um, the next thing we have is we have our storage management component here. So we can either link directly to um, Hive or to Impala. So this is the links which we have to our um, 
the Cloudera cluster. So we just pick the, the Impala connection here. So, and what you can see here is that we have two connections actually. So we can use a different connection yeah. for reading and for um, writing data. It actually depends depend on, the, on the customer preference. I mean, for querying it's definitely better to use Impala. For the, for the loading, it's like... Depends on the volumes, I think, but... Um, it's not that important. Now we create a table, so a table would be a bit boring without fields. There is one field by default, which is the glue request. So that one is there by default and you can't delete that. So this is actually how we, for our ETL piece of glue, store data in terms of different requests. Now to make this demo easy and fast, we will just um, pick a standard table in SAP. So KNA1, that's a customer master data, and we just pick all the fields from this table. Let's just save that. Um, you can see it asks for a package. In my day, that was called development class. That's how we link to the SAP transport management system. And similar as in the SAP dictionary, you need to activate the table to make that actually work and existent on the, um, uh, on the Cloudera cluster. Um, if I go into here, into Hue, Michael, what do I need to do to show this table now? Yeah, well, generally you need to uh, enter the, the Metastore Manager, uh -huh. uh, already there. You need to select the, the right database. So, as we know, we are using our internal DBQ system. So, the, our, our tool creates the database SAP DBQ based on the name of the system. And we would need to, to find, the, find the table. The cloud error there it is yes. in the first one. The cloud there up it's here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this table will now have exactly the same fields as our good old SAP table. You can see there is the SAP client, customer number, country, and tons more fields, which is the SAP master data. So um, this table is empty now. Yeah. Now, when we want to populate this table with data, what we need to do is we need to create an extractor. So to do that, we just say that we want to create such an extractor in our workbench and we give it a name, zcloudera, oh, that one sounds actually good. Um, the description could be something like SAP customer master data and the extractor type, so that's a specific thing for, for, for Blue and our ETL solution. That is like we can load data directly from local files, from files on the server, or from SAP data dictionary tables. So that's what we are doing here. So if you do that, um, we get our extractor definition. Um, we can specify a delta type. So we are able to load data in uh, deltas and not just in full update. This is master data and for the sake of this demo, let's just do full update and not a trigger or um, date-based extraction. Um, table, so our source table is of course the SAP master data for customers. Our target table will be the table which we just created, zcloudera. Import fields, so fields can have different names on the um, Cloudera <laughs> side and on SAP side. And let's just say we want to make a selection for customer number. So if you save and activate that, it asks again for a development class. So we do that and we have our extractor. Before we can use that, we need to create a variant. So the uh, variant, hey, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, so we need to create a variant where we say, I don't know, Z Cloudera VA variant. And the variant has one purpose, which is the fields which we picked before for selection, we could make a restriction here and just say customers from number to number or something. So um, let's save this variant and just schedule this full load um, in, to activate that first, okay. So, and schedule the full load in, in background. So if you just run that, what will happen now is that the data from the table is read, it's stored, no, that's not what I wanted, I wanted to show actually that job. So if we go here, we can see the job here is active, it's running, and um, once finished, it's finished by now, we can see that it copied some 2,000 records of SAP master data to Cloudera. It's pretty fast, thank you, Michal. Um, 
Good. Um, do you care to show this data now on the Cloudera side? Well, we already been there. It's super so simple. Just move. What do we need to do now? Into the hive. Let's find out our database that has a CD queue. We have our Cloudera table. And here, I think we can do it the center way. And so here it is. Here is customer. And also data. showing only like first hundred of lines. Well, it's a data sample, right? It's, it's not a data sample. Yeah. If we would sell it all the table, we will we will get it. So of course, I mean, we have different ways of accessing the same data on the SAP side. We do have a data browser which works SE16 style. Uh, we do have an ABAP API where you can read the data from your own ABAP programs on the SAP side. And we have a way of building virtual info providers. So you can imagine that like a data federation where data from the online SAP database and data from the Hadoop cluster are joined in a virtual info provider on SAP Business Warehouse. Mm -hmm. So you can work with that data seemingly in like from one data source. And so the SAP system actually looks like that it's native table that is on, on the system. Correct. Correct. So um, that concludes our 10 minute quickie demo on Glue. It just is just really this is just like only the tip of the iceberg. Much of the functionality is behind the scenes here. We just wanted to show you how easy it is to actually use and leverage this uh, this kind of software. And if you want to know more, we will do more of these demos. We do webinars, and the easiest thing you could do is you go to our webpage www.datawork.com and you use the contact feature there to get in touch with us. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks very much for your attention.